It's 5.30. I'm going to get it started. Um, make sure I look at the list. Okay. Good evening. I'm calling this workshop to order. The time is 5.30 p.m. in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. This workshop is officially open with a quorum present. The following board members are present virtually, and I will now call each of their names in the order of their districts. Um, just in case, I know Trustee Jackson will be joining just a little bit late. But Trustee Jackson, are you on by, by any chance? Okay. Um, next, we will go to District 3 Trustee Quentin Phillips. Good evening, President Ramos. Quentin Phillips represent District 3. Good to see you, sir. Moving on, uh, District 4 Trustee Daphne Brookins. Good evening, President Ramos. Daphne Brookins representing District 4. Good to see you. Uh, next, District 5 Trustee CJ Evans. Good evening. Okay, good to see you. District 6 Trustee Andar. Evening, President Ramos. Trustee Andar representing District 6. Good to see you too. District 7, Trustee Norman Robbins. Good evening, President Ramos. Norman Robbins representing District 7. Good to see you, sir. Uh, District 8, Trustee Anaya Luevanos. Uh, good evening, President Ramos. Uh, Anaya Luevanos representing District 8. Good to see you. District 9, Trustee Ashley Paz. I don't think she's joined us yet. And I am District 1, Trustee Jacinto Ramos, Jr. I'm present. Uh, on March 16th, 2020, Governor Abbott temporarily suspended certain open meetings requirements imposed by the Open Meetings Act to slow down the spread of COVID-19. This action permits meetings subject to the Open Meetings Act to be hosted by telephone or video conference. This meeting is being broadcasted live via Spectrum Charter Channel 192, the Forward ISD Ed TV channel on YouTube by searching for YouTube Forward ISD Ed TV and a link provided in the agenda. In accordance with those suspended rules, we certify the following. Notice of this workshop has been posted online for at least 72 hours. Although members of the board are not gathered in a central physical location, we do have a quorum in attendance at this workshop by video conference or telephone call. We are meeting by use of Zoom software application, which allows two-way communication for members of the public. As we would at any in-person workshop, members of the public who have followed the instructions on the workshop notice for regi registering to speak during the public comment portion will be unmuted for three minutes to speak. All other meeting procedures will adhere to board adopted procedures to the extent practicable. An audio recording of this workshop is being made and will be available to the public at a later date. We apologize in advance for any unforeseeable difficulties and ask for your patience as we navigate unprecedented conditions. If you have any questions about these suspended laws, please call the Office of the Attorney General at 888-672-6787 or by email at toma at oag.texas.gov. Uh, Ms. Molinar, do we have any public comment tonight? No, we do not, sir. So we will skip over number item number two, and we will now, um, I, I will now state the time is 5.33 p.m. The date is Tuesday, June 16, 2020. We will now recess and reconvene virtually for executive session as authorized by Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code under Sections 551.071, 0 .072, 0 .074, and 0 0.076. My colleagues, I'll see you all on the other link.
Congratulations on being a District Teacher of the Year winner for secondary. So congratulations, Coach Bradford. Yay! I'm blown away. Hey, I appreciate it. Well, Kathy, congratulations. Yay. You have what? been named one of the five secondary teachers of the year. Woo! Congratulations. Yay. Oh my gosh, I miss your hugs. Oh, thank y'all. We want to honor you as one of five secondary teachers of the year. So congratulations are definitely in order. Thank you. You know me. Yay. Thank y'all so much. Uh, honor, honored to be selected by my peers. It's very humbling. Mrs. Robertson has made it to the district teacher of the year. Well, congratulations, Ms. Robertson. They couldn't have picked a better person for the for their award. 
blessed to do what I do, and I'm just happy that um, I'm allowed to go there every day, and I do miss my kids, and um, uh, I can't wait until I can be back there. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Mr. Derek Smolowski, you have been named the Secondary District Teacher of the Year oh winner. God. That's awesome. Thank you, everyone. Jeremy Roberto and Fine Arts and Miss Yana Gita. It's good to see you all. Ms. Sanchez, congratulations. Thank you. you have been named Teacher of the Year for the district. Wait. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? I still can't stop shaking. I'm so excited. <laughs> one of our five district teachers of the year. Congratulations. Congrats, Darby. I have to do more about it. I'm very proud of it. Just, I see the difference you make in the students' lives. Not just for your students, but for all of Faye Zavala. I'm excited. <laughs> You, Carminia, have been named one of the five school guys 2020 <laughs> elementary teachers of the year. That's so easy. <laughs> you guys know I really wasn't expecting this at all. And you guys know I love Sam Rosen so much. And it's just home. And Ms. Cadena, you have been named uh, teacher of the year for our district. Oh my God, thank you so much. And you're one of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. I have been so inspired by you. Thank you, really means a lot. <laughs> You're more than deserving of this honor. You just set the bar of excellence for everybody. I am so blessed by this incredible team. I mean, it's just the most amazing thing. Industry-driven, Gold Seal programs and schools of choice offer Fort Worth ISD families and students the power of choice, now more than ever, to go beyond the basic, beyond the traditional, to find the pathway that's a match to a student's interest, goals, and learning style. And just look at the programs and schools to choose from. You've got goals and dreams for the future. We've got a high school experience to match. There you go. They can sign up. Monday. Fort Worth ISD Gold Seal programs of choice are built for dreamers like you. you do one the problem solvers, the curious minds, the creators of art and idea. Gold Seal programs deliver expert guidance, your checklist, hands-on learning, certification, college credits, and community partners who support your learning. A great example? Our P Tech early college high schools that combine high school, college, and career. So the idea is to grow. Students can earn an associate degree. Ready to go. Visit job sites, build relationships, and develop workplace skills and knowledge. Our partners enrich every Gold Seal program, open doors to careers, and put you ahead of the herd. There's a gold seal pathway to fit your interests. Like so let's give it a shot. Whether it's making machines run better and fly higher. Sales inside of it. Cater places better. Or improving health. Do you have any allergies? And housing. Whether it's serving on the front lines. Are y'all set? All right, we're ready. Or protecting citizens online. Yeah, I'm moving on the frames. Bring your biggest dreams and determination here. Really great product. Where you belong. In a Fort Worth ISD program of choice. Take graphic. Your choice. The atmosphere is electric at Fort Worth ISD Gold Seal Schools of Choice. It's like, it's like These smaller, well-focused learning communities prepare students for college and careers in the most innovative way. This combines art and math. Now we know what to do. Every school day hums with activity and empowerment at Young Men's Leadership Academy and Young Women's Leadership Academy. Future leaders are at work here, gaining knowledge, experiences, and character while developing lifelong strategies for success. Move toward your dreams at the IM Terrell Academy for STEM and VPA, 
On the STEM side, students design and problem solve in a high-tech maker space. In VPA, students train in state-of-the-art studios and perform in a magnificent hall. The school's Cowan Academy in the Humanities elevates the study of literature, history, art, and philosophy. Imagine learning multiple languages, exploring global cultures, and taking academic courses in English and Spanish. The World Languages Institute is perfect for students from Spanish immersion and dual language programs, and anyone else eager to learn Spanish immersion style. Early college high schools merge high school, college, and career. And Students go to school on Tarrant County College campuses and can earn an associate degree for free. Marine Creek Collegiate High School focuses on high academic achievement and skills for success. It's got a slightly movable door. The Texas Academy of Biomedical Sciences is a hub of health science studies with hands-on laboratory learning supported by medical industry partners. TCC South Fort Worth ISD Collegiate High takes industry partnerships to a new level. It's the district's first P-TECH early college high school. Partners such as Encore and the Fort Worth Water Department help students build skills that industries want. Schools of choice are not just for older students. Collectively, four applied learning academies serve kindergarten through the eighth grade. Students apply their knowledge to solve real life issues as they investigate the bigger world. Our Montessori program guides kindergarten through eighth grade students in multi-age classrooms that are safe and respectful. Students work through lessons, interact with others, cultivate self-discipline, and take early ownership of their education. A great start to a lifetime of learning. One size fits all education is so last century. Pick your cutting edge gold seal pathway to college, career, and community leadership. Learn more at fwisd.org slash choice or call 817-814-1540. National Volunteer Week is a time set aside specifically to honor volunteers and recognize the power of their service. In the past few weeks, we've witnessed the power of volunteers for Fort Worth ISD like never before. All schools in the state of Texas shall be temporarily closed. While the COVID-19 health crisis has brought so many things in our lives to a halt, our volunteers have been on the move, making sure our students get the services they need. Faith-based and other organizations have stepped up to support district families dealing with severe illnesses and other circumstances. Volunteers have distributed books to children to keep them entertained and learning. Remember to read, okay? And this is not a one-time thing. Every year, some 10,000 parents, corporate volunteers, literacy partners, and faith-based organizations give their time, energy, and skills to assist our teachers where they can and provide opportunities for students that will help them achieve stay healthy and believe in themselves. Good job. Our volunteers are truly amazing and they inspire us all. Thank you volunteers for your powerful support of Fort Worth ISD.
Eso es lo que vamos a estar leyendo y aprendiendo hoy. Muy buenos días, amiguitos. Aquí mi salgada de David K. Sellers en Forward ISD. Hoy vamos a trabajar con el sonido de la C. Repasemos un poquito. La letra C tiene dos sonidos. Tiene la C de conejo y tiene la C de cepillo. Hoy vamos a trabajar con el sonido de cepillo. Ahora, vamos a jugar. Así que cada vez que escuches una palabra que tenga el sonido S, vas a brincar. Si no lo tienes, no brinques, no hagas trampa. Aquí vamos. Cine tiene el sonido S. Muy bien, espero que hayas brincado. Casa tiene el sonido S. No, muy bien, no brincaste. Cereza tiene el sonido s. Muy bien. ¿Brincaste? Yo sé que sí. Vamos a ver. Caracol. ¿Verdad que no brincaste? Porque no tiene el sonido s. Ahora tenemos calabaza. ¿Tiene el sonido s? No. Cilindro. ¿Tiene el sonido s? Muy bien, vi que brincaste. Celular, tiene el sonido S. Muy bien, había que brincar. Cubo, tiene el sonido S. No. Cebolla, tiene el sonido S. Muy bien. Cebra tiene el sonido S. Bien. Cuatro tiene el sonido S. Uh -uh. Cinta tiene el sonido S. Muy bien, había que brincar. Cerca tiene el sonido S. Muy bien. Bueno, amiguitos, hasta aquí mi pequeño juego de encontrar palabras que tienen de la letra C. Ahora, ¿por qué no vas con un adulto a mirar qué cosas tú puedes encontrar en tu casa con ese mismo sonido? Haz un dibujo de él y trata de ver si puedes también escribir las palabras. Bueno, hasta aquí. Nos vemos en la próxima. Aquí pertenezco que todo padre quiere para sus hijos donde se aprende a pasos grandes. Ese lugar es el Prekinder y Kinder de Fort Worth ISD. Inscríbanse en línea empezando el primero de abril. ¡Aquí Hola, buenos días. Soy la maestra Brasa. Trabajo en la escuela de Glen Park Kindergarten para el distrito de Fort Worth ISD. Y vamos a hablar de la letra R y de su sonido fuerte R. El objetivo para hoy es aprender cuándo usar la letra R con el sonido fuerte R escribiendo palabritas que tengan ese sonido. La R tiene el sonido fuerte R cuando va al comienzo de las palabras, como por ejemplo en la palabra rinoceronte. Vamos a escribir juntos más palabritas que comiencen con la R. Ya he escrito las vocales en mi pizarra, vamos a recordar las vocales son A, E, I, O, U. Si pongo la R al principio de la palabra, junto con la vocal A, se forma la sílaba RA y puedo escribir palabras como, por ejemplo, rata. Si pongo la R con la E, tengo la sílaba RE y puedo escribir regalo. La R con la I forma la sílaba RI como la palabra risa. Recordad, la R al principio de la palabra tiene sonido fuerte. Si pongo la R con la O, leo RO y puedo escribir palabras como rojo. Y por último, si pongo la R con la O al comienzo de una palabra, va a sonar fuerte como la palabra rueda. Las palabras rata, regalo, risa, rojo y rueda 
se dicen con R fuerte porque la R está al principio de la palabra. Fíjense, solamente escribimos una. Vamos ahora a ver más palabras que se leen con la R fuerte, como por ejemplo la palabra carro. ¿Qué tiene de especial la R en la palabra carro? Pues que si se fijan, vamos a usar el dígrafo doble R, porque cuando la R suena fuerte y va en el medio de una palabra, necesito escribir doble R, carro. Lo mismo me pasa con la palabra perro. Perro lleva una R que suena fuerte, y entonces necesito escribir el dígrafo doble R. O también puedo escribir la palabra churro. Cuando la R suena fuerte en el medio de la palabra, necesito escribir el dígrafo doble R. Vamos a recordar, cuando una palabra comienza con la letra R, decimos el sonido fuerte, R. También cuando vemos el dígrafo doble R en el medio de la palabra. Y ahora en tu casa te invito a que busques y escribas más palabras que tengan el sonido R fuerte. Gracias. Los programas y escuelas de selección con sello de oro ofrecen a los estudiantes de Fort Worth ISD el poder de elegir, ahora más que nunca, para ir más allá de lo básico, más allá de lo tradicional, para encontrar el camino que coincida con sus intereses, objetivos y estilo de aprendizaje. Aprendan más en fwisd.org, diagonal choice, o llamen al 817-814-1540. Amigos, habla la maestra Marisol Martín. Soy maestra de segundo grado y doy clases en West Henley Elementary School aquí en Fort Worth. Espero que estés emocionado porque vamos a empezar. Quiero que escuches estas palabras y las repitas después de mí. Gigante. Juego. Jinete. Texas. Ajo. México. Gente, reloj. ¿Qué tienen en común todas estas palabras? Si dijiste el sonido, estás correcto. Los sonidos vienen de las letras J, G y X. La J hace el sonido pero también la, la G y la X. Cuando la G hace el sonido, es el mismo sonido que la J cuando va seguida de las vocales E o la I, como girasol. Cuando la X hace el sonido, son en las palabras como México o Oaxaca. Ahora, quiero que veas las letras, las palabras que tenemos con, como ejemplo. Gigante. Esa primera G hace la, el sonido porque viene enseguida la I. Gigante. Juego. Jinete. Texas. Ajo. México. Gente y reloj. Aquí hay algunas palabras que tienen los, el mismo sonido, pero lo puedes ver con la G, la J y la X. Ahora vamos a escribir y deletrear estas palabras juntos. Quiero que quebres las palabras en sílabas para poder deletrear y escuchar cada sonido en la palabra. Gigante, gigante, G-I-G-A-N-T-E, -E. gigante, juego, juego, J-U-E-G-O, juego, G 
ne, te, jinete. J-I-N-E-T-E, jinete. Te, has, tejas. T-E-X-A-S, tejas. A, jo, ajo. A, J, O, ajo. Me, hi, co, México. M, E, con acento, X, I, C, O, México. Gen, T, gente. G, E, N, T, E, gente. Re, lo, reloj. R, E, L, O, J, reloj. Como puedes ver, el sonido está en resaltado en amarillo. Allí puedes mirar dónde estuvo el sonido y qué letra va con el sonido. Nos vemos mañana. ¿Se hacen preguntas de por qué? Yo también. Bueno, la ciencia tiene todas las respuestas. Veamos cuáles respuestas aprenderemos hoy. Buenos días. Soy Susana Montoya, soy maestra de prekinder. Trabajo en la escuela W.J. Turner para el distrito de Fort Worth y hoy vamos a hacer un experimento con colores. Tengo mis colores primarios que son el rojo, el azul y el amarillo y quiero ver qué es lo que pasa cuando yo combino dos de estos colores. ¿Qué va a pasar? No sabemos. Entonces estas son mis tres posibles combinaciones entre estos colores. Azul con rojo, azul con amarillo y rojo con amarillo. Entonces en mi primer platito yo puse mi primer experimento y vamos a ver qué es lo que pasa con el azul y el rojo. Voy a usar mis deditos y los voy a mezclar muy, muy bien, muy, muy bien para ver qué es el color que se hace. ¡Wow! ¿Ya vieron? El color azul y el rojo hacen el color morado. Ahora vamos a ver qué es lo que pasa cuando yo combino el azul con el amarillo. Otra vez limpio mi dedito y voy a mezclarlos muy bien, estos dos colores. El, wow, ya vimos que el azul con el amarillo hacen el color verde. Por si no tenemos todos los colores, ah, podemos combinarlos y podemos sacar de ellos otros colores diferentes. Y por último, vamos a ver qué es lo que pasa cuando yo combino el rojo con el amarillo. ¡Wow! ¿Ya se fijaron qué bonito va a quedar este color? El rojo con el amarillo hacen el color naranja. ¡Wow! ¿Ya vieron qué sencillo es sacar otros colores de nuestros colores primarios? Ustedes lo pueden hacer en casa y le pueden pedir pe uh, ayuda a sus mami, a su papi, a sus hermanitos y pasar un rato muy agradable haciendo experimento con diferentes colores. Espero les haya gustado y nos vemos hasta la próxima. Gracias. Nuestros programas y escuelas de selección dan a los estudiantes el poder de elegir ahora más que nunca. Muy buenos días a todos, mi nombre es Edwin Valencia, soy maestro de la escuela primaria Morningside, enseño kinder en el distrito de Fort Worth. Estoy muy feliz de poder compartir hoy una vez más un tema, una clase. Y ahora que estamos hablando de plantas y el tema está muy relacionado, los temas que he presentado están muy relacionados con las plantas, se me ocurrió la idea, no sé si ya, ya hemos hecho alguna vez este experimento, pero se me ocurrió la idea de que Podemos utilizar los productos de las plantas como uh, los vegetales y algunas frutas para mirar cuáles flotan y cuáles se hunden. Vamos a hacer un experimento sencillo pero que a la vez nos va a dar la oportunidad de saber cuáles de estas, de estas uh, verduras o de las frutas tienen más densidad que el agua. Porque a propósito, si se hunden es que tienen mayor densidad, si no se hunden es que el agua tiene mayor densidad. Entonces, vamos a empezar, aquí tenemos la lista, si apreciamos aquí la lista, vemos claramente, vamos a empezar en ese mismo orden. Vamos a empezar con la naranja, la vamos a introducir en el agua y vamos a ver qué pasa. Si la naranja la soltamos y se hunde es porque tiene más densidad que el agua. 
o oh, parece que no tiene más densidad, o sea que está flotando en este momento, por lo cual vamos a marcar aquí que flota y va ganando el agua en densidad. Vamos a sacar la naranja y vamos a utilizar ahora la siguiente, un tomate. Vamos a mirar este tomate, lo vamos a introducir aquí en el agua, vamos a ver qué pasa. Oh, oh. Al principio se hundió, tal vez por la gravedad, pero otra vez regresó a la superficie, lo cual significa que tiene menos densidad que el agua. Vamos a sacarlo, vamos a introducir el siguiente, lo vamos a marcar aquí, que también flota. Luego vamos a utilizar un banano o un plátano, como le decimos en México, en Colombia se le llama banano, y en los Estados Unidos en inglés se le dice banana, vamos a echarlo al agua a ver qué pasa observen qué pasa qué pasó flota o se hunde ahí vieron cómo flotó vamos a sacar también flota Entonces, marcamos como ya podemos uh, sacar la conclusión de que muchos vegetales tienen menos densidad que el agua vamos a probar con la siguiente que es una fresa aquí tengo una fresa grandecita la vamos a echar al agua vamos a ver qué pasa también como pueden apreciar flotó la marcamos aquí flotó entonces vemos que muchos de los productos de los vegetales que usamos en la cocina y que son derivados de las plantas pues son de menos densidad que el agua vamos a seguir ahora con la mandarina aquí está la mandarina vamos a ver si a lo mejor es esta sí va a hundirse, ¿ustedes qué piensan? Oh oh, la solté y todo, pero sigue flotando. Vamos a marcar aquí que flota. Y luego la vamos a sacar. Significa que tiene menos densidad que el agua. Vamos ahora con la papa. Miren la papa acá, una papa común y corriente de las que compramos en la tienda. La vamos a introducir en el agua. Vamos a ver qué pasa. Oh oh. Miren esto, aquí ya podemos ver una diferencia. ¿Qué pasó? Los que están pensando que se hundió, claro, se evidencia que la papa se hundió. Entonces vamos a colocar aquí, en la columna de se hunde, vamos a colocar que la papa se hundió. Ahora tenemos una más, la manzana. Vamos a ver la manzana, qué pasa con la manzana. Esta manzana la vamos a introducir, vamos a ver si flota o se hunde. Oh oh. Miren lo que pasó, la manzana también flota. Entonces vamos a marcar aquí que la manzana flota. Y ya tenemos nuestra tabla casi a punto de terminar. Sacamos la manzana otra vez y vamos a introducir. Lo que tengo aquí es algo muy pequeño. A lo mejor esto también flote porque es demasiado pequeño. Pero podemos, tener, podemos encontrarnos con la sorpresa de que puede ser más denso que el agua. Vamos a introducir las semillas. Para eso vamos a darle un poco más de cerca. De, para, que, para poder observar claramente qué pasa con las semillas de la manzana aquí vamos a ponerlas, uno, dos, tres, listos ya, salen observen lo que está pasando con las semillas de la manzana la mayoría de ellas se han hundido, vamos a ver si estas van a hundirse o se van a quedar ahí seguramente la, las semillas de la manzana tienen un poco más de densidad y las que están arriba son las que uh, están malas o su densidad es, es menor que la del agua. Entonces vamos a marcar, porque la mayoría se fue al fondo, que se hunde. Bueno, esta es una parte de la planta también. Es una hoja, como todos la pueden apreciar. Pero es una hoja que también nos sirve para alimentarnos. Es una espinaca y por eso la quise eh, traer aquí para nuestro experimento. La vamos a introducir a ver qué pasa. La vamos a colocar encima del agua. Y vamos a ver, la voy a empujar un poco a ver si se hunde. Pues como podemos darnos cuenta, las hojas de espinaca tienen menor densidad que el agua, por lo tanto no se hunden. Entonces colocamos aquí que no se hunde. Y ahora algo tan simple como una rama, puede ser una rama de, de zacate o de alguna planta, en este caso vamos a utilizar el pasto o zacate. Eh, tengamos en cuenta que... En México se dice zacate en la mayor parte del territorio y en Colombia nosotros llamamos pasto. 
para que así aprendamos un poquito más de palabras vamos a introducir la rama aquí al agua y vamos a ver qué pasa saquemos las hojas de la espinaca para, para comprobar que no es por las hojas de espinaca que no se hunde y podemos apreciar que la rama tampoco se hundió o sea que en este momento flota así damos por terminado este experimento que es muy interesante ustedes lo pueden hacer en la casa no solamente con estos productos sino también con algunos objetos que ustedes encuentran en la casa con permiso de los papás que lo puedan utilizar para hacer experimentos y así van a aprender un poco más a lo mejor como pasó acá muchas cosas floten o muchas cosas se hunden muchas gracias y nos vemos en otra oportunidad y hagan que crezca su mente. Vean como el próximo segmento de Unidos para Aprender. Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es Miss Torres. Soy maestra de primer grado de Charles Nash Elementary en Fort Worth ISD. Y hoy les tengo una nueva lección de movimiento. Para esta lección va a necesitar un papel. En este papel vas a escribir los seis movimientos que tú deseas hacer para tu juego y en tu sección. Yo escogí estos seis que están aquí. Número uno, salto de tijera. Número dos, lagartijas de pared. Número tres, correr en el mismo lugar. Número cuatro, saltar. Número cinco, mueve tu cuerpo. Y número seis, brazos en círculo. Luego que crees tu lista con los números del uno al seis y que cada número va a representar. Puedes buscar un dado si tienes en tu casa algún juego de mesa que tenga dados o algún juego de cartas que tengas en tu casa que tenga los números del 1 al 6. Los vas a colocar en orden diferente y los pones en una mesa. Bien, luego vas a comenzar a hacer los ejercicios. Los vas a hacer por 30 segundos cada repetición. Si tienes cartas como yo, agarras la primera carta. 4. Número 4 es saltar. Luego de que lo hayas repetido por 30 segundos, puedes lanzar el dado o agarrar una nueva carta. Número 3. Número 3 es correr en el mismo lugar. Te quedas en tu mismo espacio y pretendes que estás corriendo. Luego de que lo hayas realizado por 30 segundos, lanzas el dado o agarres una nueva carta. Número 1. Saltas en tijera. Muy bien. Luego de que lo hayas realizado por 30 segundos, lanzas el dado o agarras una carta nueva. Número 5. Mueve tu cuerpo. Puedes mover tus brazos, todo tu cuerpo. Puedes hacer cualquier movimiento que desees. Luego de que lo hayas hecho por 30 segundos, agarras una nueva carta. Número 6. Número 6 es brazos en círculo. Vas a extender tus brazos y moverlos en círculos. Luego de que lo hayas hecho por 30 segundos, vienes a buscar tu última carta. Número 2. Lagartijas en la pared. Luego de que hayas realizado las lagartijas, puedes continuar el juego otra vez. Puedes volver a reorganizar las cartas en orden diferente y repetir el juego hasta que desees. Nos vemos entonces en el próximo video. Que tengan lindo día. Aquí pertenezco. Hay un lugar que todo padre quiere para sus hijos donde se aprende a pasos grandes. Ese lugar es el Prekinder y Kinder de Fort Worth ISD. Inscríbanse en línea empezando el primero de abril. ¡Aquí me veo! Es hora de moverse. Vamos a sacudir el cuerpo en el próximo segmento de Unidos para Aprender. Hola, mi 
amigos, me llamo Jeanette Vázquez y soy la maestra de Educación Física en Glen Park Elementary. Hoy vamos a jugar un juego que se llama Flag Tag. So, en este juego vas a tener, va, lo único que vas a necesitar van a ser casetinas. Va, a cada compañero que va a jugar contigo van a tener que tener un casetín y lo vas a poner aquí en tu, en tu cintura. El, obje, el objetivo de este juego es que agarres el el casetín de tu compañero y cuando lo agarres ese compañero va a estar a un lado va a ser jumpy jacks y el que se queda con el, el casetín a último es el ganador para este juego so get ready aquí tengo mis hermanos y les vamos a enseñar cómo jugar este juego alright are you ready set go So, si se juega flag tag, puedes jugar con más de calcetines en cada, en ca, en cada lado. So, ojalá que les guste en este juego. Recuerden niños que es importante que tomen agua, comer saludable y dormir bien. Alright, hasta luego. Bye. Want a high school experience that moves you? How does your character move? Explore the I Am Terrell Academy for STEM and VPA. And this down arrow brings this forward. On the STEM side, students innovate, design, and problem solve in the high-tech maker space. Coursework includes advanced levels of math and science and preparation for college and careers in engineering and computer science. Opportunities to earn college hours, field trips, and community partnerships elevate the experience. Ready and go. VPA students blend academics with intensive training in the arts, in state-of-the-art studios, practice rooms, a black box theater, and an amazing performance hall. Support from the local arts community provides unique opportunities as students prepare for college scholarship auditions and artistic careers. Students also participate in the Cowan Humanities Academy, in what way is he repeating it? Because a college prep level study that transforms English, social studies, and Latin classes. The I am Terrell Academy for STEM and VPA, shaping innovators, artists, and lifelong learners. So you're designing your 3D hand over here. Like musicians in an orchestra, trustees and the superintendent have different parts to play in shaping education in Fort Worth ISD. The men and women who make up the Fort Worth ISD Board of Education are diverse in gender, race, age, occupations, experiences, perspectives, and opinions. What they have in common is an interest in Fort Worth ISD that runs deep. Almost all are parents of current or recent district students. And each has a history of strong community leadership, as you'll see, starting with our newest members. Daphne Brooken represents District 4. Daphne is a youth administrator for Workforce Solutions for Tarrant County and a former Forest Hill Mayor Pro Tem. Ann Dar, District 6. 
Anne is a lifelong educator with a special commitment to deaf and hard of hearing students and their families. CJ Evans, District 5. CJ is a lawyer who also facilitates a monthly pro bono legal clinic for women at risk. Quentin Phillips, District 3. Q brings real life insight to the board as a professor at TCU and the founding partner of the nonprofit Community Frontline organization. Toby Jackson, District 2, a lifelong advocate for children. Toby is always looking to bring attention to initiatives and programs that level the playing field. Anael Luebanos, District 8. And Anael is an accountant who goes beyond the numbers to make sure all children have access to educational and other opportunities. Ashley Paz, District 9, an entrepreneur, business owner, and equity warrior. Ashley fights tirelessly on behalf of children and families. Norman Robbins, District 7. Norm brings years of professional experience in both the public and private sector, as well as sage guidance to new initiatives. And Board President Jacinto Ramos, Jr., representing District 1. Cinto is a proven leader on the local, state, and national stage in educational policy, racial and ethnic equity, and school board governance. And now our trustees share an exciting and challenging new commitment that is changing the future of Fort Worth ISD. It's a journey taken in collaboration with Superintendent Scribner, focused on one primary goal, improving student outcomes. In January 2017, our board adopted the Texas Education Agency initiative called Lone Star Governance. It's a continuous improvement model for boards dedicated to sharpening their focus on better student outcomes. Lone Star Governance intensively trains and guides board members in working with superintendents to create clear-cut student outcome goals and measures aligned to the goals. Fort Worth ISD trustees, collaborating with Superintendent Scribner, set goals for improvement in these crucial areas, literacy, math, and college career and military readiness. Lone Star Governance also clarifies responsibilities in meeting the goals, which duties belong to the board, and which belong to the superintendent. superintendent For example, three, the board the sets the goals, is, uh, but it's the responsibility of the superintendent to find ways to reach them. In other words, the board focuses on governance, guiding, supporting, and monitoring relevant data, while the superintendent focuses on the management of the district, providing administrative leadership, and proposing and implementing policy changes. This brings up another key component of Lone Star Governance identified constraints. An example of a board constraint is tracking its use of time in meetings to ensure the majority of time is spent on student outcome goals. Another example, not trying to perform the roles of the superintendent. An example of a superintendent constraint is ensuring low performing campuses have equitable access to resources. Also, not allowing adult convenience or preference to take priority over academic progress of students. But a big part of governance is actively engaging you, the community, in our work. Aye. As your elected representatives, this school board wants to represent your values. So you'll see more of us where you are. We'll be visiting your clubs and organizations and listening. Your input informs our decision making. Like the diverse sections of an orchestra, each Board of Education trustee brings a distinct contribution to their collective work. The result can be harmonious, dynamic support of the district's mission to prepare all students for success in college, career, and community leadership. Your Fort Worth ISD Board of Education is committed to teamwork at its finest to improve outcomes for all students. Well, hello and welcome to our 10 elementary and secondary Fort Worth ISD Teachers of the Year. Congratulations to each of you for your dedication to our students. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Teachers of the Year from both elementary and secondary schools. Uh, first, we have with us uh, Jennifer Sanchez from Western Hills Elementary. Hello, Jennifer. Brooke Darby from De Savala Elementary. 
Carminia Moreno from Sam Rosen Elementary. Amy Kraft from Carter Park Elementary. Mireya Cadena from Cesar Chavez Elementary. Kathy Elliott from TABS, Texas Academy of Biomedical Sciences. Derek Smolowski from Air Eastern Hills High School. Matthew Bradford from Meadowbrook Middle School. Vicki Robertson from Polytechnic High School. And Ray Hi. Horton of the TCC South Collegiate Academy. Hi, Congratulations to all 10 of you. You found out about your selection uh, this past Monday um, at 10 surprise Zoom meetings. Your principals and colleagues attended those meetings and celebrated with you which gave them the opportunity to publicly express their gratitude for what you do for our students and for your colleagues. Uh, our teachers of the year have historically not only been wonderful with um, young people, but they've also been teacher leaders and great colleagues and great, and great team members. You were first selected as campus a teacher of the year because you're student-centered in these challenging times. You've all risen to the occasion and, uh, and helped our students uh, transition to virtual learning. Uh, you're innovative, you're creative, and you have a heart for our students. Um, months after the campus re recognition, uh, you've risen to the challenge again of teaching online from home in a more student-centered way than ever. As you draw from your experience, your creativity, and your innovation, more so than ever before. Uh, this is why we are recognizing all of you as winners. Uh, we're very fortunate in Fort Worth ISD to have great leadership in our governing board. Uh, and I know that our, our trustee, our president of the board, Jacinto Ramos Jr., uh, would like to say a few words, and he feels exactly the same way. At this time, I'll turn it over to Jacinto. Thank you, Dr. Scribner. Good afternoon to our 10 district teachers of the year. Life is so different this spring, but what is not different is the dedication you give to our students. Our students need your expertise, your stability, and your support more than ever. And we see that support every single day. You are conducting classes online, posting YouTube video lessons, and posting activities on social media to meet your students' academic needs. We have seen the parades go through students' neighborhoods and special words of encouragement on social media to help our students emotionally. They miss you, and you let them know how much you care. These are very different times, and it calls for a different approach to selecting the District Teacher of the Year. We decided to recognize all of you for the winners that you are each and every day, especially in times like this. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank this you. is the first time in our history that we're celebrating all 10 of our district teachers of the year. Uh, we're sorry that we can't host the annual awards dinner, but please believe me when I tell you how proud we all are of you. Uh, we will post a special video on our district website and shine the digital spotlight on all of you. Uh, we have a special guest with us this afternoon, uh, Mabry Jackson of Central Market and HEB. And during these difficult times with coronavirus, HEB has been a wonderful community partner, uh, helping families in need and, uh, and really stepping up to the plate more so than many, many other corporations. Central Market has been the annual sponsor of both Campus Teacher of the Year and District Teacher of the Year recognition programs for many years. They're a great friend to the Fort Worth ISD and we appreciate their continued support, especially now. Mabry, uh, I think she has a special message for all of you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Scribner. And we are so excited to be here again. We're here every year to celebrate um, the Fort Worth Teacher of the Year events because we're committed to strong public education. And it's a system that begins and ends with extraordinary teachers. And that's all of you that are here today. And you know, even as you're adapting to online communication with your students and your parents, your role as an educator and as a neighborhood builder and a community builder and a nation builder, it's still really important as your students learn outside of your classroom. And the knowledge and skills that you instill in our kids, they impact businesses and families here in Fort Worth. Every person in this town has had at least one teacher that taught us through love and discipline to strive through excellence, regardless if you're sitting in the classroom or if you're sitting at home learning online. And not one of you 
picked the easy path to career fulfillment or personal riches. That's for certainly, you know, we're certainly sure about that. And that's never been more evident as it is now. But one thing that we know is that each of you picked the most important path to impact the lives of others. And we're proud at HEB and Central Market to stand with you in your quest for academic excellence. And as Dr. Scribner said, that we normally deliver a cake and balloons and flowers to your classrooms, we're sending each of you a $100 Central Market gift card so you can buy a great dinner on us. But more importantly, we're recognizing each of you with $2,500 in recognition for your Excellent achievement, but you've earned it, and we cannot say thank you enough. So you will each receive twenty five hundred dollars, and then your hundred dollar gift card. All right. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mabry. That is uh, incredibly generous and um, uh, first first of a kind um, uh, uh, effort uh, from you all uh, to this large group. We really appreciate you and appreciate uh, HEB and Central Market. Uh, we want to congratulate, again, uh, all of our teachers on being named District Teacher of the Year. This is a wonderful accomplishment for you and for your school. Uh, this recognition reflects not only the kind of teacher you are, but the kind of person you are. Uh, we always talk about content. Uh, kids don't care about content until they feel connection. And in each one of your cases, you're not only um, experts in your areas of content, but you're also uh, experts at connecting uh, with our students, and, and we appreciate it, and they appreciate it. Uh, the, you're knowledgeable, dedicated, caring, and, and, and that's what our students, students need right now. It has been said that to the world, you may be just one person, but to one person, you may be the world. And we thank you again for your dedication to our students. Have a great rest of the week. Take care and please be safe. We need you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Scribner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to everybody else. Thank you. You as well. Congratulations. Back at you. Congratulations, to everyone. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you to our community partners for being here and supporting our schools. And thank you, Dr. Scribner, for um, giving us this opportunity. It's been amazing. I'm super thankful. Thank you so very much. It's just very, just a huge privilege to get to serve the students of Fort Worth and to help erase the, um, the opportunity gap in our district. I just want to say thank you very much. I appreciate everything you guys are doing for us and all the support we're getting through these times that are changing. Thank you again. I want to thank, first of all, God, and I want to thank the district for this honor. And it, it is a privilege because now this uh, these honor reinforces us to keep fighting for our kids and help them to reach their dreams. Thank you so much. I want to thank my school, my students, my district, uh, HEB and Central Market. Just thank you for this opportunity. I want to say thank you and give a huge shout out to everyone in Fort Worth, especially everyone at my campus and a big shout out to all my band students and families. They're the ones why I'm here. I want to give a special congratulations to Matthew Bradford because it's pretty awesome to have have um, two secondary teachers of the year in the same pyramid. So congratulations, congratulations everyone and thank you. Thank you, sir, you too. I'm thankful to God for this opportunity. Also, I'd like to thank Dr. Scribner and Ms. Jackson for, for taking the time to recognize all the teachers here. And uh, thankful to my staff who've helped me grow and, and become what I am today. And to my, my students that I spend time with every day. Uh, thank you all for the opportunity. Um, I just want to thank y'all um, for um, giving me this honor, and I thank um, my, my campus and the community and all my students that I just get to do what I love doing every single day, and, um, and that's the honor in itself. Yes, I'd uh, like to thank Ms. Jackson, HEB, and uh, City Markets uh, for their participation in this. Um, I, too, would like to um, thank uh, Ms. Collins and my fellow staff members that um, it's a team effort that I'm just happy to be part of the team and so um, feel so blessed to have been honored this way. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Ramos, and Mr. Ramos. Mr. Ramos and the rest of our school board. Thank you so much. Well. Hello.
world wake me up to another good good morning time to all right go. everybody so we got a big day planned for us all right it's no ordinary day for students of nine fort worth isd high schools this day students are leaving campus for learning adventures in the fast moving field of construction some step off the bus onto active construction sites. We're going to start down here, kind of show you what's going on with the job. While others walk into real world environments where buildings of the future are conceptualized. It's all part of a learning experience called Blueprint, in which nine Dallas Fort Worth companies invite students to their worlds to learn on the job. Okay, so we've got our construction superintendent. Here, what kind of issues do you see? The manhole. The manhole. Students plan, create, and solve problems through interactive strategy sessions. You uh, use the uh, all these grid points to kind of help you space things out. And if the bus is queuing right here, then the parking lot has to be somewhere back here. So <laughs> We had this project to kind of construct a school um, in here in Fort Worth. And uh, some of the cool uh, things that we had were outdoor learning centers, which we put on a, on the second floor, so kind of like a patio. From design strategies to tools and materials, students get a glimpse of all aspects of construction. Yeah, this activity does represent the manufacturing process. We've talked about different kinds of construction methods that they use. And this is what they call a board form concrete. This is the front of the building. This is going to be your main entry. Students see firsthand how time-honored math and science skills, trigonometry, it's all angles and distances, work alongside cutting-edge technology to get the job done. The drone flew through, it took all of these images and it stitched them together. Do you have any idea what you want to do as far as construction or landscaping? Whether you're doing commercial or residential, there's opportunities everywhere. This day's experience may prove to be a pivot point for some of these high school students. I think working at a construction site is pretty cool. I could see myself out here working. And certainly all walk away with a better understanding of what it takes to build our homes, schools, and cities. If they could build this, then imagine what others could build. I belong here. There's a place all parents want for their young child, where learning happens in leaps and bounds in literacy, math, and social skills, where teachers are state certified and super suited to provide structure, encouragement, and a nurturing safe space for every child. And that place is Fort Worth ISD, pre-K and kindergarten. Register online starting April 1st. Your child belongs here. Congratulations on selecting Fort Worth ISD Pre-K or Kindergarten for your child. Let's get your new students signed up. First, create a new account by entering your name, email address, password, and security questions. Next, enter your child's name, date of birth, and you're ready to begin new student registration. This process will go quicker if you have a few things already on hand, including information about the last school your child attended, if any, the name, phone number, and address of any emergency contacts, and photos of the following three documents stored on your cell phone, tablet, or laptop, your child's birth certificate or another legal ID, immunization record, and proof of address, such as a utility bill or lease agreement. You'll be asked to upload the photos of the documents later. Make sure you can read the information on them. The good news is, at any step in the process, you can save what you've done so far and come back to it later. Another note, as you register, notice the required fields. They're marked. Be sure to enter them. You will not be able to complete the registration without the required information. And remember, the district will receive information the way it is entered, so it's important to spell, capitalize, and punctuate names and addresses correctly. Now, here are some of the categories and questions you can expect, starting with the school year you're registering for, and whether your child has attended a Fort Worth ISD school before. You'll need to enter your child's name and date of birth exactly as they appear on the birth certificate. Also, ethnicity and race, and home and mailing address. This will help you locate your child's zoned school. 
If the school shown on the map is not the correct or preferred school, a drop-down menu will allow you to choose another school and select the reason. However, your student's ability to go to another school will depend on whether space is available. You'll enter the main phone number and the home address and email of primary contacts, and you can designate emergency contacts, but you must include their phone numbers and home addresses. There will be a family survey section with questions about the student's health, family income, and languages spoken in the home. The form also asks if the student is a member of a military family or if the student is living in a temporary housing situation. Your answers to these questions and others will determine your student's eligibility for services. Your answers can also help the registration get processed sooner. The form includes a series of agreements and consent forms for parents, such as a student directory information release, a media release, the student code of conduct, and an agreement concerning the use of the district's technology equipment and systems. Now it's time to upload the documents we mentioned earlier. That is, the birth certificate or other acceptable identification, immunization record, and proof of address. If you've already saved photos of the documents to your device, simply choose Upload and select the photos from your camera roll. Or press Upload and take a photo at this time. Finally, type your name as your signature, along with your relationship to the student. Then, review and submit the form, taking a few minutes to double-check spelling, capitalization, and punctuation. If you leave out a required field, you will automatically be directed back to it to fill in. And if you need extra help, you can contact the Parent Info Line at 817-814-2070 or email parentinfo at fwisd.org. Thank you for giving your child a great start to their education journey in Fort Worth ISD. Want a high school experience that moves you? How does your character move? Explore the I Am Terrell Academy for STEM and VPA. And this arrow brings this forward. On the STEM side, students innovate, design, and problem solve in the high-tech maker space. Coursework includes advanced levels of math and science and preparation for college and careers in engineering and computer science. Opportunities to earn college hours, field trips, and community partnerships elevate the experience. Ready and go. VPA students blend academics with intensive training in the arts, in state-of-the-art studios, practice rooms, a black box theater, and an amazing performance hall. Support from the local arts community provides unique opportunities as students prepare for college scholarship auditions and artistic careers. Students also participate in the Cowan Humanities Academy, in what way is he repeating it? Because a college prep level study that transforms English, social studies, and Latin classes. The I am Terrell Academy for STEM and VPA. Shaping innovators, artists, and lifelong learners. So if you're designing your 3D hand over here. About this time every spring, we celebrate the best of the best at our Fort Worth ISD Teachers of the Year Awards Day. It's a beautiful event hosted by Central Market. Well, hello and welcome to our 10 elementary and secondary Fort Worth ISD Teachers of the Year. One year later, the celebration looks very different by necessity. Congratulations to each of you for your dedication to our students. But what it lacks in glamour, it makes up for in even more excitement and appreciation. That's because instead of choosing just two top teachers, one for elementary and one for secondary, this year we named all 10 finalists our District Teachers of the Year. Here's how they got the news. You have been named uh, Teacher of the Year for our district. Thank you so much. Wait, are you serious? In 10 separate Zoom meetings on April 20th, Campus principals and colleagues announced their winning teacher, surprising her or him with signs, balloons, and cheers. It's just the most amazing thing. I'm blown away. Afterward, Fort Worth ISD School Board President Jacinto Ramos Jr. and Central Markets Director of Public Affairs, Mabry Jackson, joined me in congratulating all 10 teachers, again on Zoom. 
Our students need your expertise, your stability, and your support more than ever. And we see that support every single day. You are conducting classes online, posting YouTube video lessons, and posting activities on social media to meet your needs, academic needs. We decided to recognize all of you for the winners that you are each and every day, especially in times like this. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Robert. And the knowledge and skills that you instill in our kids, they impact businesses and families here in Fort Worth. Every person in this town has had at least one teacher that taught us through love and discipline to strive through excellence. Regardless if you're sitting in the classroom or if you're sitting at home learning online, and we're proud at HEB and Central Market to stand with you in your quest for academic excellence. This recognition reflects not only the kind of teacher you are, but the kind of person you are. We always talk about content. Kids don't care about content until they feel connection. And in each one of your cases, you're not only um, experts in your areas of content, but you're also uh, experts at connecting uh, with our students. And, and we appreciate it and they appreciate it. And Ms. Jackson had some of the best news of all. We normally deliver a cake and balloons and flowers to your classrooms. We're sending each of you a $100 Central Market gift card so you can buy a great dinner on us. But more importantly, we're recognizing each of you with $2,500 in recognition for your excellent achievement. You've earned it, and we cannot say thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Fort Worth ISD Teachers of the Year. Thank you again for the amazing job you do and the connections you make with your students, especially now when they need that relationship more than ever. quiere para sus hijos donde se aprende a pasos grandes en lectura, matemáticas y destrezas sociales. Sus maestros están certificados por el Estado y muy aptos para educar y apoyar en un espacio seguro para cada niño. Ese lugar es el Prekinder y Kinder de Fort Worth ISD. Inscríbanse en línea empezando el primero de abril. Felicitaciones por seleccionar Prekinder o Kinder de Forward ISD para sus hijos. Comencemos con la inscripción de su nuevo estudiante. Primero, genere una nueva cuenta ingresando su nombre, dirección de correo electrónico, contraseña y algunas preguntas de seguridad. Luego, ingrese el nombre y la fecha de nacimiento de su hijo o hija. Y ya está listo para comenzar la inscripción de su nuevo estudiante. Este proceso será más rápido si ya tiene algunas cosas disponibles, como la información sobre la última escuela a la que asistió su estudiante, si la hubo, el nombre, número de teléfono y dirección de algún contacto de emergencia y fotos almacenadas en su teléfono celular, tableta o computadora de los siguientes tres documentos. El certificado de nacimiento de su hijo o hija u otra identificación legal, registro de vacunación y comprobante de domicilio como lo es una factura de servicios públicos o contrato de arrendamiento. Se le pedirá que cargue las fotos de los documentos más adelante, pero asegúrese de que puede leer la información que contiene. La buena noticia es que en cualquier paso del proceso, usted puede guardar lo que ha hecho hasta el momento y volver a este punto más adelante. 
Otra nota, al inscribirse, observe que los campos obligatorios están marcados y asegúrese de ingresarlos. No podrá completar la inscripción sin la información requerida. Y recuerde, el distrito recibirá la información de la forma en que usted la ingrese. Es importante revisar la ortografía y deletear nombres y direcciones correctamente. Ahora, aquí hay algunas de las categorías y preguntas que usted puede esperar comenzando con el año escolar al que se están inscribiendo. Y si su hijo o hija ya asistió a una escuela de Fort ISD anteriormente, deberá ingresar el nombre y la fecha de nacimiento del estudiante exactamente como aparecen en el certificado de nacimiento. También el grupo étnico, raza, domicilio y dirección postal. Esto último le ayudará a localizar la zona de asistencia de su estudiante. Si la escuela que se muestra en el mapa no es la escuela correcta o de preferencia, un menú desplegable le permitirá elegir otra escuela y seleccionar la razón. La probabilidad de que su estudiante asista a otra escuela dependerá del espacio disponible. Usted deberá ingresar un número de teléfono principal, la dirección y el correo electrónico de los contactos principales. Y también puede designar contactos de emergencia, pero debe incluir sus números de teléfono y domicilios. Habrá una sección de encuesta familiar con preguntas sobre la salud del estudiante, ingresos familiares y los idiomas que se hablan en el hogar. El formulario también pregunta si el estudiante es miembro de una familia militar o si el estudiante vive en una situación de vivienda temporal. Sus respuestas a estas y otras preguntas determinarán la elegibilidad de su estudiante para servicios. Sus respuestas también pueden ayudar a que la inscripción se procese antes. El formulario incluye una serie de acuerdos y formas de consentimiento para padres, tales como consentimiento de información en el directorio estudiantil, consentimiento de comunicado de prensa, el código de conducta estudiantil y un acuerdo sobre el uso de los equipos y sistemas tecnológicos del distrito. Ahora es tiempo de agregar los documentos que mencionamos anteriormente. El certificado de nacimiento u otra identificación aceptable, la cartilla de vacunación y un comprobante de domicilio. Si ya guardó fotos de los documentos en su dispositivo, solo seleccione cargar y elija las fotos de su cámara. De otra forma, seleccione cargar y tome una buena foto en este momento. Finalmente, escriba su nombre como su firma y su parentesco con el estudiante. Y revise y envíe el formulario tomando unos minutos para verificar la ortografía, las mayúsculas y la puntuación. Si omitió un campo obligatorio, será enviado automáticamente para completarlo. ¿Necesita ayuda extra? Puede comunicarse con la línea de información para los padres al 817-814-2070 o enviarnos un correo electrónico a parentinfo.fwisd.org. Gracias por darle a sus hijos un gran comienzo en su jornada educativa en Forward ISD. Buenos días amigos, mi nombre es Miss Delgado y trabajo en TVK Sellers for ISD. Hoy vamos a jugar un juego de las palabras compuestas. ¿Qué son palabras compuestas? Palabras compuestas son palabras que ellas solitas tienen su propio significado y al unirse crean una nueva palabra. Vamos a ver estos ejemplos. La palabra saca puntas está compuesta de la palabra saca y puntas y es lo que utilizamos para sacarle la puntita al lápiz. Telaraña. Está compuesta de la palabra tela, araña, y esas son esas cositas blancas que vemos que las arañas dejan por ahí, que ahí a veces capturan su alimento. Girasol. Girasol está compuesta de la palabra girar y sol. Es una flor muy bonita. Girasol. Ahora vamos a jugar un juego. De dos arriba, si la palabra es compuesta. De dos abajo, si la palabra no es compuesta. Escoba, ¿es una palabra compuesta? ¿Sí o no? Muy bien. No, escoba no es una palabra compuesta. 
Miremos automóvil. Automóvil es una palabra compuesta. Excelente. Si es una palabra compuesta, es otro nombre para carro. Vamos a ver, montaña. ¿Montaña es una palabra compuesta? No, muy bien. ¿Baloncesto es una palabra compuesta? Muy bien. Baloncesto sí es una palabra compuesta. Es el deporte donde utilizamos una bola color naranja y la insertamos en un canasto. Boca abiertos. ¿Es una palabra compuesta? Muy bien. Boca abiertos sí es una palabra compuesta. Y usualmente hacemos ese gesto cuando estamos sorprendidos o algo no lo podemos creer. Vamos con otra. Almohada, ¿es una palabra compuesta? Muy bien, almohada no es una palabra compuesta. Y por último, rascacielos, ¿es una palabra compuesta? Muy bien, rascacielos sí es una palabra compuesta y se le llama a esos edificios que son muy, muy altos y se ven como si estuvieran rascando o tocando el cielo. Bueno amigos, hasta aquí mi clase de hoy. Mira por tu casa, por tu vecindario, a ver si encuentras palabras compuestas. Nos vemos, hasta la próxima. Aquí pertenezco. Hay un lugar que todo padre quiere para sus hijos, donde se aprende a pasos grandes. Ese lugar es el Prekinder y Kinder de Fort Worth ISD. Inscríbanse en línea, empezando el primero de abril. ¡Aquí Hola amigos, soy la maestra Marisol Martín. Soy maestra de segundo grado en West Henley Elementary School aquí en Fort Worth. Ahora vamos a dar una lección sobre ortografía y espero que estén emocionados porque vamos a empezar. ¿Okay? Escucha estas palabras y quiero que las repitas después de mí. Arte, cuento, tortuga, dedos, campo. Blanco, árbol, martes. ¿Qué tienen en común todas estas palabras? Todas estas palabras tienen sílabas cerradas. Una sílaba cerrada es una sílaba que termina con un consonante. Los consonantes son todas las letras que no son vocales. Eso lo pueden mirar aquí en las letras que están en color azul. B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, C, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y y Z. Un ejemplo de una, una sílaba cerrada es como esta palabra trompo. La primera sílaba trompo. Termina con la M. La M es un consonante. Y otra cosa que puedes estar mirando es cómo termina tu boca al final de esa sílaba. Si termina con tu boca cerrada, trom, esa va a ser una sílaba cerrada. Tu boca puede estar cerrada en tres diferentes, diferentes maneras. Con tus labios, con tus dientes o con tu lengua. Ok, entonces, mientras estoy leyendo estas palabras, quiero que veas mi boca para ver cuáles de esas sílabas es cerrada. Arte. Ar. Mi boca en esa sílaba estaba cerrada y esa es la sílaba cerrada. Cuento. Terminó con mi lengua cerrando mi boca. Entonces, esa es la sílaba cerrada. Cuento. To. Tortuga, tortuga, de dos, se cerró con mis dientes, sílaba cerrada, dos, de dos. Campo, campo, la primera sílaba, cam, cerró mi boca con la M, entonces esa es mi sílaba cerrada. Blanco, blanco, blan. Terminó con mi lengua cerrando mi boca, entonces esa es la sílaba cerrada, blanco, ar, 
árbol. Los dos, las dos sílabas en árbol son sílabas cerradas. Y martes. También en esa, martes, las dos sílabas están cerradas. Terminaron con consonantes. Entonces, ahora vamos a escribir estas palabras. Y cuando estamos deletriendo estas palabras, quiero que las quebres entre sílabas para poder escuchar cada sonido en esa palabra. Ar, T, arte, A, R, T, E, arte. Cuen, so, cuento. C, U, E, N, T, O, cuento. Tor, tu, da, tortuga. T, O, R, T, U, G, A, tortuga. D, dos, dedos. D, E, D, O, S, dedos. Cam, po, campo. C, A, M, P, O, campo. Blanco, blanco, B-L-A-N-C-O, blanco. Árbol, árbol, A con acento, R-B-O-L, árbol. Martes, martes, M-A-R-T-E-S, martes. Y todas las sílabas que están resaltadas en amarillo, esos demuestran las sílabas cerradas porque terminan con un consonante y terminan con nuestra boca cerrada. Bueno amigos, para la próxima. Mi nombre es Susana Montoya, soy maestra de prekinder y trabajo en la escuela WJ Turner del distrito de, de Fort Worth. Hoy quiero enseñarles una manera muy sencilla pero muy eficaz en la que ustedes pueden enseñarles a sus hijos y ayudarles ¿Cómo empezando y juntando dos sonidos pueden empezar a hacer sus sílabas y empezar a leer y a escribir? ¿Ok? Uh, vamos a necesitar nada más un pedazo de papel, lo vamos a cortar en, uh, para hacer un librito. ¿Ok? Mi librito va a quedar más o menos así. Yo le puse practicando mis sílabas. Y voy a cortarlo a la mitad porque de un lado le voy a poner mis consonantes... Ah, yo les recomiendo que pongan las consonantes que más usamos en nuestro vocabulario, que son la S, la M, la P, la L y la T, para poder empezar con ellos, ¿ok? Del otro lado vamos a poner nuestras consonantes, pero yo les recomiendo que no las pongamos en el orden en el que todos las conocemos, A, E, I, O, U. Vamos a ponérselas un poquito reborujadas para asegurarnos de que de verdad están leyendo, ¿ok? Ah, voy a empezar a practicar con el niño a decirle, ok, ¿qué letra es esta? Él me va a decir S. ¿Qué sonido tiene la S? S como la viborita. Muy bien. ¿Y esta qué letra es? O. ¿Y qué sonido tiene la O? O, O, O. Ok, ahora vamos a juntar el sonido S. O. Y juntas van a decir SO. Muy bien. Ahora vamos a cambiarle a otra vocal. Esta sigue teniendo el mismo sonido S. ¿Y qué sonido tiene esta? Y entonces juntas dicen, sí, muy bien. Y así sucesivamente con todas y cada una de las uh, vocales. Después uh, podemos cambiarle la consonante y volver a empezar con todas y cada una de las vocales. Uh, después el niño puede estar más listo y le podemos agregar otras consonantes y así sucesivamente hasta que el niño lo, lo domine más y pueda empezar el solito a aprender este, cómo hacer sus propias sílabas. Espero y les haya servido y les guste, y nos vemos en la próxima. Gracias. Hola estudiantes, hoy tenemos una interesante lección de la ciencia. Veámosla ahora en el próximo segmento de Unidos para Aprender. Buenos días niños y niñas, mi nombre es Milena Kamoto, pertenezco al distrito de Forward a la escuela Carol Pick, y esta es nuestra mascota Dragoncito. Hoy vamos a estar explorando nuevamente el ciclo de una semilla. En el ciclo de una semilla yo aprendí muchísimo de este libro. Me encanta comenzar con libros porque de los libros aprendemos muchísimo. Este me enseñó cómo crece una semilla de una forma que puede ser factible para todos nosotros. Vamos a ver. 
La autora de este libro es Helen Jordan y el ilu la ilustradora es Loretta Krupinski. Ella hizo estos hermosos dibujos. ¿Qué es una semilla? Una semilla es una planta pequeñita que aún no ha comenzado a crecer. Las zanahorias, el trébol, las margaritas, el roble, el maíz, el trigo y el manzano fueron una vez una semilla antes de que comenzara a germinar. Esta es la semilla de un árbol. Algún día será un árbol como este. Esta semilla muchas veces la impulsa el viento y llega a distintas partes. Esa es una forma en que las semillas pueden crecer. El, el viento las transporta a distintos lugares. Se pueden agarrar algún animal o una persona que entonces las pone en la tierra y comienzan a germinar. Ciertas semillas como la del roble crecen muy lentamente. El roble es un árbol que crece muy lentamente. Imagínate que siembras un roble y puedes tener un hijo y puedes llegar a ser abuelo y el roble todavía sigue creciendo. Yo aquí tengo unas semillas de roble. En esta semilla podemos observar cómo comenzó a salir un brote y un retoño, pero luego paró su crecimiento. Y en esta tenemos que ya comenzó a salir la raíz. Esas son semillas de roble. Esta, también hay semillas que crecen muy rápido como las de los frijoles con las que vamos a estar investigando hoy. Crecen tan rápido que en pocas semanas podemos ver eh, el tipo de planta en la que se va a convertir. Si tú quieres, tú puedes sembrar frijol. Puedes sembrar las semillas en una cáscara de huevo, en macetas, en una lata o en un tiesto viejo. Pero asegúrate que tenga hoyos al fondo. Nosotros vamos a utilizar una cáscara. Donde vamos a poner nuestro dedito, le vamos a poner la semilla, la vamos a tapar con tierra y luego le vamos a poner un poquito de agua. Asegúrate de ponerle los números a cada cascarón del huevo para poder observar como buenos científicos. Vamos a observar los cambios en la semilla. Aquí los niños la están observando. Puedes esperar unos tres días y puede que esté igual, quizás un poquito abultada. Luego le comienza a salir un poquito de la raíz y luego, según pasan los días, en dos o tres días más le puedes a sacar el, la cáscara número 2 y, y luego la número 3 y comienzas a ver los cambios hasta que tienes el brote, luego el retoño y finalmente lo puedes poner en la tierra. Aquí tenemos las cáscaras de huevos. Yo las enumeré del 1 al 12. Como pueden ver aquí tengo el número 1. Ya las llené de tierra y, les, y te, tenemos un frijol. Simplemente lo puedes hundir con tu dedito y luego lo cubres de tierra. Y luego vamos a observar como buenos científicos. Ahora niños y niñas, cuando según tú vayas observando, podemos ver que va a ir creciendo. Primero un, re, un brote, luego un retoño y luego una planta que ya tiene las hojas y está lista para ser trasplantada a la tierra o a una maceta más grande. Recuerda. Que para que una planta crezca necesita aire, tierra, sol, aire y agua. Aquí nos los dicen también. Tierra, agua, sol y aire. Y la puedes sacar justo de la cáscara de huevo y ponerla en la tierra. Y se va a convertir en una planta. En este caso va a ser una planta de frijol. En otros casos van a ser plantas de otras cosas. Depende de la semilla. Si una semilla recibe todos los elementos, crecerá y se convertirá en una planta. Llegará a ser la misma clase de planta de la cual nació un manzano, trigo, maíz, roble, margaritas, trébol, zanahorias o cualquier otra cosa. Es, y vamos a observar. Como buenos científicos también tenemos que anotar las cosas que observamos. Así que si en el día 3 sacas tu semilla... Dibuja cómo se ve. Puede que no haya ningún cambio. Luego, si vuelves a observar en el día 5, hmm, ¿cómo se ve tu semilla ahora? Quizás ya pueda tener un poquito de raíz. Quizás luego puedes ir al día 7 y ver cómo se ve tu semilla. Puede que ahora la raíz esté más larga y comience a salir un brote. Bueno, espero que te disfrutes mucho haciendo este experimento. 
Hasta la próxima. Want a high school experience that moves you? Explore the I Am Terrell Academy for STEM and BPA. On the STEM side, students innovate, design, and problem solve in the high-tech maker space. BPA students blend academics with intensive training in the arts, state-of-the-art studios, practice rooms, black box theater, and an amazing performance hall. The I Am Terrell Academy for STEM and BPA, shaping innovators, artists, and lifelong learners. Congratulations on being a District Teacher of the Year winner for secondary. So congratulations, Coach Bradford. Yeah! I'm blown away. Hey, I appreciate it. Well, Kathy, congratulations. Yay. You have what? been named one of the five secondary teachers of the year. Woo! Congratulations. Yay! Oh my gosh, I miss your hugs. Oh, Yay! thank y'all.
school want to honor you as one of five secondary teachers of the year. So congratulations are definitely in order. Thank you. You me. Yay. Thank y'all so much. Um, honor, honored to be selected by my peers. It's very humbling. Mrs. Robertson has made it to the district teacher of the year. Well, congratulations, Ms. Robertson. They couldn't have picked a better person for the for their award. Blessed to do what I do, and I'm just happy that um, I'm allowed to go there every day, and I do miss my kids, and um, I can't wait until I can be back there. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Mr. Derek Smolowski. You have been named the secondary district teacher of the year. Oh my winner. God. Winner! That's awesome. Thank you everyone, Jeremy Roberto and Fine Arts and Miss Yana Gita. It's good to see you all. Ms. Sanchez, congratulations. Thank you. You have been named Teacher of the Year for the district. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Still can't stop shaking. I'm so excited. I'm one of our five district teachers of the year. Congratulations. Congrats, Darby. I have to do more about it. I'm very proud of it. Just, I see the difference you make in the students' lives. Not just for your students, but for all of Faye Zavala. I'm excited. <laughs> you, Carminia, have been named one of the five four five 2020 <laughs> Olympic Teachers of the Year. I'm feeling easy. You guys know I really wasn't expecting this at all, and you guys know I love Sam Rosen so much. It's just home. And Ms. Cadena, you have been named uh, Teacher of the Year for our district. Oh my god, thank you so much! Oh You're one of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. I have been so inspired by you. Thank you, really means a lot. <laughs> the bar of excellence for everybody. I am so blessed by this incredible team. I mean, it's just the most amazing thing. Industry-driven, Gold Seal programs and schools of choice offer Fort Worth ISD families and students the power of choice, now more than ever, to go beyond the basic, beyond the traditional, to find the pathway that's a match to a student's interest, goals, and learning style. And just look at the programs and schools to choose from. You've got goals and dreams for the future. We've got a high school experience to match. There you go. They can sign up. Money. Fort Worth ISD Gold Seal programs of choice are built for dreamers like you. Can you do one simple The problem solvers, the curious minds, the creators, of art and idea. Gold Seal programs deliver expert guidance, your checklist, hands-on learning, certification, college credits, and community partners who support your learning. A great example, our P-Tech early college high schools that combine high school, college, and career. So the idea is to grow. Students can earn an associate degree. Ready to go. Visit job sites, build relationships, and develop workplace skills and knowledge. Our partners enrich every Gold Seal program, open doors to careers, and put you ahead of the herd. There's a Gold Seal pathway to fit your interests. Like so let's give it a shot. Whether it's making machines run better and fly higher, sales inside of it, the place is better, or improving health, do you have any allergies? And housing. Whether it's serving on the front lines, are y'all set? All right, we're ready. Or protecting citizens on. Yeah, I'm moving on the frames. Bring your biggest dreams and determination here. A really great product. Where you belong. In a Fort Worth ISD program of choice. Take your graphic. Your choice.
The atmosphere is electric at Fort Worth ISD Gold Seal Schools of Choice. It's like, it's like These smaller, well focused learning communities prepare students for college and careers in the most innovative way. This combines art and math. Now we know what to do. Every school day hums with activity and empowerment at Young Men's Leadership Academy and Young Women's Leadership Academy. Future leaders are at work here, gaining knowledge, experiences, and character while developing lifelong strategies for success. Tomorrow, you know it, all be it. Move toward your dreams at the IM Terrell Academy for STEM and VPA. On the STEM side, students design and problem solve in a high-tech makerspace. In VPA, students train in state-of-the-art studios and perform in a magnificent hall. The school's Cowan Academy in the Humanities elevates the study of literature, history, art, and philosophy. Imagine learning multiple languages, exploring global cultures, and taking academic courses in English and Spanish. The World Languages Institute is perfect for students from Spanish immersion and dual language programs, and anyone else eager to learn Spanish immersion style. Early college high schools merge high school, college, and career. And to all Students go to school on Tarrant County College campuses and can earn an associate degree for free. Marine Creek Collegiate High School focuses on high academic achievement and skills for success. It's got a slightly movable joint. The Texas Academy of Biomedical Sciences is a hub of health science studies with hands-on laboratory learning supported by medical industry partners. TCC South Fort Worth ISD Collegiate High takes industry partnerships to a new level. It's the district's first P-TECH early college high school. Partners such as Encore and the Fort Worth Water Department help students build skills that industries want. Schools of choice are not just for older students. Collectively, four applied learning academies serve kindergarten through the eighth grade. Students apply their knowledge to solve real-life issues as they investigate the bigger world. Our Montessori program guides kindergarten through eighth grade students in multi-age classrooms that are safe and respectful. Students work through lessons, interact with others, cultivate self-discipline, and take early ownership of their education. A great start to a lifetime of learning. One size fits all education is so last century. Pick your cutting edge gold seal pathway to college, career, and community leadership. Learn more at fwisd.org slash choice or call 817-814-1540. National Volunteer Week is a time set aside specifically to honor volunteers and recognize the power of their service. In the past few weeks, we've witnessed the power of volunteers for Fort Worth ISD like never before. All schools in the state of Texas shall be temporarily closed. While the COVID-19 health crisis has brought so many things in our lives to a halt, our volunteers have been on the move, making sure our students get the services they need. Faith-based and other organizations have stepped up to support district families dealing with severe illnesses and other circumstances. Volunteers have distributed books to children to keep them entertained and learning. Remember to read, okay? And this is not a one-time thing. Every year, some 10,000 parents, corporate volunteers, literacy partners, and faith-based organizations give their time, energy, and skills to assist our teachers where they can and provide opportunities for students 
that will help them achieve, stay healthy, and believe in themselves. Good job. Our volunteers are truly amazing, and they inspire us all. Thank you, volunteers, for your powerful support of Fort Worth ISD. Like musicians in an orchestra, trustees and a superintendent have different parts to play in shaping education in Fort Worth ISD. The men and women who make up the Fort Worth ISD Board of Education are diverse in gender, race, age, occupations, experiences, perspectives, and opinions. What they have in common is an interest in Fort Worth ISD that runs deep. Almost all are parents of current or recent district students. And each has a history of strong community leadership, as you'll see, starting with our newest members. Daphne Brookins represents District 4. Daphne is a youth administrator for Workforce Solutions for Tarrant County and a former Forest Hill Mayor Pro Tem. Ann Dar, District 6. Ann is a lifelong educator with a special commitment to deaf and hard of hearing students and their families. C.J. Evans, District 5. C.J. is a lawyer who also facilitates a monthly pro bono legal clinic for women at risk. Quentin Phillips, District 3. Q brings real life insight to the board as a professor at TCU and the founding partner of the nonprofit Community Frontline organization. Toby Jackson, District 2, a lifelong advocate for children. Toby is always looking to bring attention to initiatives and programs that level the playing field. Anaya Luebanos, District 8. And Anael is an accountant who goes beyond the numbers to make sure all children have access to educational and other opportunities. Ashley Paz, District 9, an entrepreneur, business owner, and equity warrior. Ashley fights tirelessly on behalf of children and families. Norman Robbins, District 7. Norm brings years of professional experience in both the public and private sector, as well as sage guidance to new initiatives. And board president, Jacinto Ramos Jr., representing District 1. Cinto is a proven leader on the local, state, and national stage in educational policy, racial and ethnic equity, and school board governance. And now our trustees share an exciting and challenging new commitment that is changing the future of Fort Worth ISD. It's a journey taken in collaboration with Superintendent Scribner, focused on one primary goal, improving student outcomes. In January 2017, our board adopted the Texas Education Agency initiative called Lone Star Governance. It's a continuous improvement model for boards dedicated to sharpening their focus on better student outcomes. Lone Star Governance intensively trains and guides board members in working with superintendents to create clear-cut student outcome goals and measures aligned to the goals. Fort Worth ISD trustees collaborating with Superintendent Scribner set goals for improvement in these crucial areas, literacy, math, and college career and military readiness. Lone Star Governance also clarifies responsibilities in meeting the goals, which duties belong to the board, and which belong to the superintendent. superintendent For example, three, the board sets the goals, is, uh, but it's the responsibility of the superintendent to find ways to reach them. In other words, the board focuses on governance, guiding, supporting, and monitoring relevant data, while the superintendent focuses on the management of the district, providing administrative leadership, and proposing and implementing policy changes. This brings up another key component of Lone Star Governance identified constraints. An example of a board constraint is tracking its use of time in meetings to ensure the majority of time is spent on student outcome goals. Another example, not trying to perform the roles of the superintendent. An example of a superintendent constraint is ensuring low-performing campuses have equitable access to resources. Also, not allowing adult convenience or preference to take priority over academic progress of students. But a big part of governance is actively engaging you, the community, in our work. Aye. As your elected representatives, this school board wants to represent your values. So you'll see more of us where you are. We'll be visiting your clubs and organizations and listening. Your input informs our decision making.
Like the diverse sections of an orchestra, each Board of Education trustee brings a distinct contribution to their collective work. The result can be harmonious, dynamic support of the district's mission to prepare all students for success in college, career, and community leadership. Your Fort Worth ISD Board of Education is committed to teamwork at its finest to improve outcomes for all students. Well, hello and welcome to our 10 elementary and secondary Fort Worth ISD Teachers of the Year. Congratulations to each of you for your dedication to our students. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Teachers of the Year from both elementary and secondary schools. Uh, first, we have with us uh, Jennifer Sanchez from Western Hills Elementary. Hello, Jennifer. Brooke Darby from De Savala Elementary. Carminia Moreno from Sam Rosen Elementary. Amy Kraft from Carter Park Elementary. Mireya Cadena from Cesar Chavez Elementary. Kathy Elliott from TABS, Texas Academy of Biomedical Sciences. Derek Smolowski from Eastern Hills High School. Matthew Bradford from Meadowbrook Middle School. Vicki Robertson from Polytechnic High School. And Ray Hi. Horton of the TCC South Collegiate Academy. Hi, Congratulations to all 10 of you. You found out about your selection uh, this past Monday um, at 10 surprise Zoom meetings. Your principals and colleagues attended those meetings and celebrated with you which gave them the opportunity to publicly express their gratitude for what you do for our students and for your colleagues. Uh, our teachers of the year have historically not only been wonderful with um, young people, but they've also been teacher leaders and great colleagues and great, and great team members. You were first selected as campus a teacher of the year because you're student-centered in these challenging times. You've all risen to the occasion and, uh, and helped our students uh, transition to virtual learning. Uh, you're innovative, you're creative, and you have a heart for our students. Um, months after the campus re recognition, uh, you've risen to the challenge again of teaching online from home in a more student-centered way than ever, as you draw from your experience, your creativity, and your innovation more so than ever before. Uh, this is why we are recognizing all of you as winners. Uh, we're very fortunate at Fort Worth ISD to have great leadership in our governing board. Uh, and I know that our, our trustee, our president of the board, Jacinto Ramos Jr., uh, would like to say a few words, and he feels exactly the same way. At this time, I'll turn it over to Jacinto. Thank you, Dr. Scribner. Good afternoon to our 10 district teachers of the year. Life is so different this spring, but what is not different is the dedication you give to our students. Our students need your expertise, your stability, and your support more than ever. And we see that support every single day. You are conducting classes online, posting YouTube video lessons, and posting activities on social media to meet your students' academic needs. We have seen the parades go through students' neighborhoods and special words of encouragement on social media to help our students emotionally. They miss you, and you let them know how much you care. These are very different times, and it calls for a different approach to selecting the District Teacher of the Year. We decided to recognize all of you for the winners that you are each and every day, especially in times like this. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. this is the first time in our history that we're celebrating all 10 of our district teachers of the year. Uh, we're sorry that we can't host the annual award center, but please believe me when I tell you how proud we all are of you. Uh, we will post a special video on our district website and shine the digital spotlight on all of you. Uh, we have a special guest with us this afternoon, uh, Mabry Jackson of Central Market and HEB. And during these difficult times with coronavirus, HEB has been a wonderful community partner, uh, helping families in need and, uh, and really stepping up to the plate more so than many, many other corporations. Central Market 
has been the annual sponsor of both Campus Teacher of the Year and District Teacher of the Year recognition programs for many years. They're a great friend to the Fort Worth ISD, and we appreciate their continued support, especially now. Mabry, uh, I think she has a special message for all of you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Scribner. And we are so excited to be here again. We're here every year to celebrate um, the Fort Worth Teacher of the Year events because we're committed to strong public education. And it's a system that begins and ends with extraordinary teachers. And that's all of you that are here today. And you know, even as you're adapting to online communication with your students and your parents, your role as an educator and as a neighborhood builder and a community builder and a nation builder, it's still really important as your students learn outside of your classroom. And the knowledge and skills that you instill in our kids, they impact businesses and families here in Fort Worth. Every person in this town has had at least one teacher that taught us through love and discipline to strive through excellence, regardless if you're sitting in the classroom or if you're sitting at home learning online. And not one of you picked the easy path to career fulfillment or personal riches. That's for certainly, you know, we're certainly sure about that. And that's never been more evident as it is now. But one thing that we know is that each of you picked the most important path to impact the lives of others. And we're proud at HEB and Central Market to stand with you in your quest for academic excellence. And as Dr. Scribner said, though we normally deliver a cake and balloons and flowers to your classrooms, we're sending each of you a $100 Central Market gift card so you can buy a great dinner on us. But more importantly, we're recognizing each of you with $2,500 in recognition for your excellent achievement. But you've earned it and we cannot say thank you enough. So you will each receive $2,500 and then your $100 gift card, all right? So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mabry. That is uh, incredibly generous and um, uh, first, first of a kind um, uh, effort uh, from you all. Uh, to this large group. We really appreciate you and appreciate uh, HEB and Central Market. Uh, we want to congratulate again uh, all of our teachers on being named District Teacher of the Year. This is a wonderful accomplishment for you and for your school. Uh, this recognition reflects not only the kind of teacher you are, but the kind of person you are. Uh, we always talk about content. Uh, kids don't care about content until they feel connection. And in each one of your cases, you're not only um, experts in your areas of content, but you're also uh, experts at connecting uh, with our students. And, and we appreciate it, and they appreciate it. Uh, the, you're knowledgeable, dedicated, caring, and, and, and that's what our students, students need right now. It has been said that to the world, you may be just one person, but to one person, you may be the world. And we thank you again for your dedication to our students. Have a great rest of the week. Take care and please be safe. We need you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Scrooge. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to everybody else. Thank you. You as well. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you to our community partners for being here and supporting our schools. And thank you, Dr. Scribner, for um, giving us this opportunity. It's been amazing. I'm super thankful. Thank you so very much. It's just very, just a huge privilege to get to serve the students of Fort Worth and to help erase the, um, the opportunity gap in our district. I just want to say thank you very much. I appreciate everything you guys are doing for us and all the support we're getting through these times that are changing. Thank you again. I want to thank, first of all, God, and I want to thank the district for this honor, and it, it is a privilege because now this, uh, this honor reinforces us to keep fighting for our kids and help them to reach their dreams. Thank you so much. I want to thank my school, my students, my district, uh, HEB, and Central Market. Just thank you for this opportunity. I want to say thank you and give a huge shout out to everyone in Fort Worth, especially everyone at my campus, and a big shout out to all my band students and families. They're the ones why I'm here. I want to give a special congratulations to Matthew Bradford because it's pretty awesome to have 
have um, two secondary teachers of the year in the same pyramid. So congratulations, congratulations everyone, and thank you. Thank you, sir, you too. I'm thankful to God for this opportunity. Also, I'd like to thank Dr. Scribner and Ms. Jackson for, for taking the time to recognize all the teachers here. And uh, thankful to my staff who've helped me grow and, and become what I am today, and to my, my students that I spend time with every day. Uh, thank you all for the opportunity. Um, I just want to thank you all um, for um, giving me this honor. And I thank uh, my, my campus and the community and all my students that I just get to do what I love doing every single day. And, um, and that's the honor in itself. Yes, I'd uh, like to thank Ms. Jackson, HEB, and uh, City Markets uh, for their participation in this. Um, I too would like to um, thank uh, Ms. Collins and my fellow staff members that um, it's a team effort that I'm just happy to be part of the team and so um, feel so blessed to have been honored this way. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Ramos, Mr. And, Mr. Ramos. Mr. Ramos and the rest of our school board. Our school board. Thank you so much. Board as well.
we have a quorum? Yes, you do. We do. Okay. All right. In accordance with the open meetings law, the board opened the meeting at 5.30 p.m. in a private video conference with a quorum present, recessed and reconvened open session virtually, adjourned regular session, convened executive session, and then the adjourned executive session now reconvened open at 8.56 p.m. in the public virtual video conference with a quorum present. Trustees who are present virtually are, I'm gonna call each trustee by name, District 2 Trustee Toby Jackson. Not with us yet. District 3 Trustee Quentin Phillips. Present. Thank you. District 4 Trustee Daphne Brookins. Not yet. District 5 Trustee CJ Evans. Present. Thank you. District 6 Trustee Andar. Present. District 7 Trustee Norman Robbins. Present. Thank you. District 8 Trustee Ana Luebanos. Present. Thank you. District 9 Trustee Ashley Paz. Present. And I am District 1 Trustee Jacinto Ramos Jr. and I'm present. Um, looks like we are now ready to adjourn. Thank you all for your hard work today. Um, just making sure are there any closing comments from any of my colleagues? Looks like we have no closing comments, so this meeting is adjourned. We'll see you soon.